Have you ever been so frustrated with your partner over the silliest things? Maybe you made a comment to your partner and all of a sudden it's like World War III breaks out. <laughs> I know how you feel. I've been there before too. My name's Joe Moffitt. I'm Christina Moffitt. AKA Team Moffitt with Master Life by Design. And I'm excited to have my girl here today because she is never really on there, but <laughs> she is so knowledgeable in the area of relationships. And today's video is around how to effectively communicate with your partner without fighting. Let's be honest, we all have speed bumps in our relationship and we define a speed bump as in, it's a different way of saying a fight, right? Like, because if we all picture something in our minds when we say a certain word. And so when you think about fight, for me, I think of two people like boxing going at it in my mind. What do you think? I just think about people like yelling and screaming at each other. Yeah, and so all of a sudden, unconsciously you have that picture, but if we say a speed bump, it's like you go up and you go over. So we call it a speed bump in relationships. Mm -hmm. So we don't put that projection out there and associate it with your partner. Mm -hmm. So how do you effectively communicate? Well, first you gotta understand that communication is not just words. Mm -hmm. See, words are only 7% of communication. Mm -hmm. Most people, they get so caught up in, what do I say, right? And all of a sudden it's like, they would try to find the perfect words and that's really only 7% of communication. Mm -hmm. So what are the other parts? Well, 38% of communication is how you say it, right? It's not what you say, it's how you say it. Have you, any of you ever heard that saying before? I heard that growing up. It's not what you say, it's how you say it. And all of a sudden, you know, now that we're married, I, I totally get it, right? <laughs> and in relationships, I hope you get that, right? So 38% is communicate of communication is how you say it, your tonality, your pitch, your, you know, your tempo, all that. Because let's be honest, I could sit there and be like, you're a bitch, right? <laughs> and it would sound so sweet, right? But, or I could sit there and be like, I love you. And like, it's like, you're not yeah. gonna, people, you're gonna feel the difference, right? Mm -hmm. Versus if you really are sincere when you say something and match it with those compelling words. So what's the rest of the percentage? Well, 55% of communication is uh, nonverbal, right? And so how do you show up when you're having these moments with your partner plays a big role in your communication style. So if I'm sitting there like this and I'm like, okay, talk to me. Yep. She's going to get so triggered. She's going to get so pissed off and frustrated with me versus if I'm sitting there, you know, just like, I don't know, just kind of nonchalant, like open listening, you know, acknowledging her, hearing her and shaking my head. So yeah. Also, like, for example, if your partner is trying to communicate with you and you're like looking down at your phone, like that's another way that you're using your physiology and not being present with your partner. Um, so that's something too. Yeah, presence is huge. If you're not present with your partner, they know it, they feel it. Think about it. I'm sure there's been a time where you've been with someone and they're physically there, but mentally they're somewhere else, right? They're, they're thinking about, you know, sports or thinking about work. They're thinking about whatever anything and everything but mm -hmm. you and that's so frustrating mm -hmm. and so that can cause you guys to have a major speed bump on top of what your speed bump is <laughs> so the second thing is you got to have what we create and what we call check-ins mm -hmm. right because the best way to have a healthy relationship is to be proactive right and so you want to make sure that you guys are having what we call check-ins now check-ins I suggest start on a daily basis, right? Every evening before bed or whatever you wanna schedule it. But you guys have a check-in daily. And as you guys get better and better and things get better in the relationship, you might do every three days and then once a week, right? And so you wanna have what we call those check-in times. Now, what is a check-in? Because she actually introduced this concept to me when we first got into our relationship because just like anything else and anyone else, we when we first get in a relationship, it's like, we're all lovey-dovey, like she could do no wrong, right? I can do no wrong. She could leave you know, her towel on the floor and I'd be okay with it. But over time, especially when you move in with someone, you, when you're spending all the time with them, you're like, oh my God, right? And so a check-in, what that does is we create this sacred space, right? It's like you're coming into the sacred space, she's coming into the sacred space, and in this sacred space, you have to have what we call ground rules, right? Just like in any sporting game or any activity, there's always rules to the game. And so how you do that is you set the rules around your check-ins, which means you gotta talk about this check-in process before you actually do it. Yeah. 
And for us, some of our roles were, you know, when, whatever you put into the sacred space and when we step into it, mm -hmm. You can't come back at the person. You just gotta listen until they're empty. Regardless of how you may feel or what you wanna say or solve or correct, you wanna make sure that time is like, the rule is there, right? And you don't interrupt and you don't check in. Yeah, because the tendency will be that you might feel like you need to defend yourself or you might feel like you need to make a point or a statement, but it's really important, this was important to us, to let the other person empty out and finish what they're talking about before you interject. Which also, not only the rules of that space, mm -hmm. but how do you show up before you enter that space, mm -hmm. right? And so like, if you think about it, like for those of you that have gone to church, right? Maybe you, you got to let go of all your challenges, your mm -hmm. frustrations, right? Or if you're in sports, you can't show up to the game pissed off and angry or sad and depressed, mm -hmm. right? Like you got to make sure before you step into that arena, you're at your best, or at least you're bringing your best. Um, you don't have to be your best, but you got to bring your best. Mm -hmm. So when you're doing this check-in space, right, the sacred space, mm -hmm. you gotta make sure that the intention going in is to, min to make the relationship stronger mm -hmm. by the time you leave the sacred space from the check-in than when you entered, right? It's not to come in and bash someone. That's not the intention. The intention is, Here's how I need to empty my cup to you and share with you how I feel. I need you to do that. And then once we've both emptied, the intention is how do we move forward with a solution? So I have to know going into our check-ins, so she's gonna bring some stuff up that's gonna pull my baggage up, right? Like it's gonna trigger me. But I know that her intention is pure and that we're trying to make a solution for this mm -hmm. instead of keeping allowing it to eat away at us because that'll erode a relationship instead of build a relationship up. So for example, some things we might check in about is um, how we've been communicating with each other, right? If we've been having patience with each other, I don't know, many of you parents out there, especially with like little ones, emotions can get escalated, right? Yeah. So how we're talking to each other might be a check-in, finances might be a check-in, um, sexual experiences and intimacy could be a check-in. So yeah. those are some things we check in about often. No, that's huge. And you know, for mm -hmm. us, you know, having two little kids, you know, having intimacy, it's, <laughs> it can be a challenge, especially yeah. when you're going all day for from like 4.30 in the morning or if she don't get any sleep. It's like, we gotta talk like, yeah. you know, hey, it's been a couple of days, we haven't been intimate. How do we, mm -hmm. how do we find a solution for that? Mm -hmm. I feel like I need you more, right? Like mm -hmm. those are some of the things we bring to the table or, you know what, hey, I think you're spending too much money on loose ends. <laughs> no, me, me, not her. She would, you know, the shopping queen would never do that, right? <laughs> they would be all me. And so these are examples she would bring to the table to me. But no, those are some examples we wanna highlight because you really need to have those check-ins around those. Here's how I've been feeling. Here's how, you know what? Hey, I just want to let you know, um, I haven't been getting help around the house. I really need your help. And so check-ins are important because you're actually draining the frustration from the relationship, right? Mm -hmm. You want to make sure that also, this is a point is we may just say, Hey, you know what? It might be early in the morning. We'll be like, hey, can we do a check-in tonight? Yeah. Uh, and so what that communication means to us is like, hey, there's some things I need to get off my chest to you, which means then I may say, yeah, I start to think to myself, you know what, hey, what are some of the things that I can be able to share in our sacred space so that mm -hmm. our relationship is getting built up and we're not tearing it down? Mm -hmm. And one last thing, you can also check in on what's going really well. And that's mm -hmm. also important too, is sometimes you might not have things that you want to work on or you want to improve on, but still have the check-in and check in and honor each other around what's working. Which brings us to our third and final point, which is if you're going to communicate effectively mm -hmm. with your partner, you want to make sure that you kind of have a framework. See, our work is all about frameworks and what we do in coaching and relationship coaching, business coaching, we use frameworks. Well, there's a great framework when you're communicating with your partner around things. So for example, I may go to Christina and I might have some challenge with her, like she hasn't been helping around the house, for example, right? I'm not saying she doesn't, she's awesome <laughs> at it. But I might sit there and say, babe, I understand you got a lot going on with the boys. You make and you do so much for them. You're an incredible mom. And I need help around the house cleaning up. Right, I know that you're super busy, you're a kick-ass coach, a kick-ass mom, mm -hmm. and so I just wanna make sure that we're on the same page. 
And then I may, if I need to, I may say, can we check in around this later on tonight, mm -hmm. right? So here's your framework. It's called the sandwich effect. Mm -hmm. And so what you wanna do is you wanna say something really good about your partner. Mm -hmm. And it's not something BS or fake, mm -hmm. right? Like you wanna be authentic around it. The second thing is your, your kind of, your feedback in which you want them to know and improve upon, right? Mm -hmm. And so we constantly wanna improve in the area. So that's the second component. And then the third component is something positive again, right? Mm -hmm. You share with something authentically that they're doing really well or how they're showing up, mm -hmm. right? So in that example, I said something positive. I share what I needed help with, that thing that could be improved upon on her end mm -hmm. or even my end, right? And then mm -hmm. something positive. Yeah. So when you're in that sacred space, it's really good to use that sandwich effect so that you're not triggering the partner mm -hmm. and you got to be careful because you never want to sit there and say you 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 mm -hmm. right in those moments you want to say i noticed what's coming up for me is mm -hmm. that i could use some help around the house right because it takes that kind of defense uh, it takes her going into defense mm -hmm. uh, from that so this sandwich effect has been so effective in our relationship. Mm -hmm. We use it all the time, like even if we're not in a solid check-in. And we also use this with our clients. So we use it to communicate with our clients and even like our business owners and people use it to communicate with their staff and employees. So this is a great tool that you can just keep on your tool belt and use all the time. Exactly. And the sandwich effect is just one of many frameworks out there. And so we're going to deliver so many more frameworks to you guys. All right, so wrapping up here, what do we go over today? We talked about in relationships how communication's huge, right? 55% of communication is nonverbal, 38% of communication is how you say, the way you communicate back to the person, tonality, voice flexion, and 7% is words. Next, we shared with you what a check-in is, how you create that sacred space and how you tap into that. And third, we gave you a framework called the sandwich effect on how you can effectively communicate with your partner so that you're not triggering them more in that sacred space so that you guys can come out even stronger than before when you came in and entered. And as I said earlier, the best way to have a relationship without fighting is to be proactive, right? You wanna drain the volcano before there's an eruption. And we've had plenty of eruptions in our relationships on each other. And we're not saying that that's healthy or normal, but you know what, it is normal. And people go through fights or speed bumps in relationships. In fact, there's a lot of people I follow, they have great relationships, but the challenge on social media is that so many people put their highlight reel mm -hmm. where we like to keep it real, yeah. right? We share with people how amazing our relationship is, but then we do share with people like, you know what, hey, we got into a speed bump last night mm -hmm. and it, we got into it. And then, but this is how we overcame it. We're not here to just dump trash on people. We share with people how we overcome it, what the solutions are. Why? Because we want people to see that we're not just some trophy husband and trophy wife, even though she's the way better looking <laughs> one here, right? But we're normal too. We have, you know, we have challenges just like you. It doesn't matter what financial level you are, what status you have or anything like that. We all have the same challenges in relationships, especially. Yeah, and great relationships don't just happen, they're created. So on our channel, you're gonna find a shit ton of tools that will help you guys create a really beautiful relationship. Awesome. So anything else you wanna throw out there? Um, I think we're good. All right, awesome. Well, hey guys, if you found this video valuable, please hit that thumbs up button. Please subscribe to the video. Comment below. What did you take away from this video? How are you going to implement it? We wanna know, we wanna hear from you. We love building relationships with you guys. So in this relationship series, there's gonna be more. So check out the next video. Yeah, and if you guys have questions about the check-ins, comment below. Awesome, guys. So with that, hope you guys found value. My name's Joe Moffitt. I'm Christina Moffitt. AKA T Moffitt. Have a great one. See you guys.